Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about saving and customizing your own popcorn effects particle effects. So let's just jump right into it. I have a project already set up here with a cool looking uh, custom uh, set of custom popcorn effects that I have set up here. Again, you can go to the uh, set tab under custom under the particle folder to, to uh, save your stuff. And this is where we'll uh, talk about a little bit later on. All right, I'm going to just go ahead and load in this tornado popcorn effects first. You can see the dummy will appear there. And let's just go ahead and press Shift S to simulate right off the bat. All right, this is a particle, or rather a uh, ribbon emitter. Okay, so we have ribbons of uh, of shapes, colorful shapes, just kind of emitting in a popcorn, in a, in a not popcorn, a tornado type pattern. All right, swirling around like this. Let's press Shift S and take a look at how we can customize this in a variety of different ways. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my popcorn effects tab. Uh, make sure that we have under scene. Make sure you have the tornado item selected and it's activated right there. And we're going to go ahead and select the emitter ribbon trail ribbon item right here under the particle section. And we have this diffuse channel right here. Uh, this kind of just a medial elongated, elongated leaf shape. All right. And we're going to go ahead and customize. We're going to load in something customized there. Uh, I'm going to go to my explorer folder and load in this thunder PNG. And let's just uh, bring that up. You can see it's kind of a cool electrical type pattern there. And if we shift S to simulate this, you can see, there we go. We have sort of a cool electrical storm, like a sci-fi type deal. Uh, so we just kind of customized our tornado right there. All right, so that's pretty cool. And we can save this as is. But let's go ahead and customize a couple other things, including the transform value and the attributes of this as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here uh, to particle settings. And under lifetime, you can see we have three different colors. We have start color middle color and end color. Now any parameter that's in green, in green text, means you can keyframe it, all right, throughout the duration of your project. Uh, so I'm gonna press F3 and go into my timeline here. Let's close down our project. We don't need that for now. And let's go ahead and customize these. So at frame one, which is the frame we're at right now, I'm gonna change the colors. I'm gonna change it to, uh, let's do some nice flamboyant uh, pink color right there at the very, for the start color. And then the middle will choose maybe a bit something a bit more toned down, a bit more uh, purple, purplish maybe. All right, something like that. Put a bit more saturation in there. And then for the end color, we'll just choose something a bit more faded out, like this. Okay. All right. So now if we press Shift S to simulate, we're gonna have a purple tornado. All right. Pretty cool stuff. But even cooler is the fact that we can change this throughout the duration of our timeline. So I'm gonna go to maybe frame 150 or 160 or so. And let's change these colors. So I'm going to change it to a uh, kind of blue color now. So let's do this, uh, change it to a nice solid blue for the start color. Middle color will change it to a nice uh, lighter blue. And end color will change it to something a bit uh, less saturated there. And you can see that adds a keyframe there in our tornado track. Now to find where that's added, we can go down here to attributes. And you'll see that there's a keyframe for attributes as well under particle settings. And lifetime is where we find the final keyframe right there. Now you can move these around, uh, like I mentioned, you can just go ahead and just, uh, you know, move them around wherever you want and they'll all move together. So no worries there. Let's go to a different frame now, maybe uh, somewhere closer to the end, maybe 350 or 380 or something. And let's change these colors to uh, something a bit different. Let's change them to a uh, nice yellow, so nice high contrast from the blue. All right, so let's change this one to yellow and maybe we'll go for a bit of a green for the middle color. And uh, end color will just choose something a bit less saturated there. All right, there we go. All right, and again, it adds those same keyframes right there. Now, if we press Shift S at this point, it's just going to simulate those colors that we have right here. Okay. However, if we go and press and we play back, you'll see it will change from purple to a bluish color and fading into a nice uh, green color. Okay. So we can customize that entire particle effect on the timeline, and we can save that customization and we save all that data in a cup in a custom popcorn effects file. Now, what I'm going to do next is we're also going to add some transform positions onto that too. So we're just going to go ahead and start here, uh, maybe frame one, uh, maybe frame 60, 160 will go to like, uh, let's go down to maybe uh, press a W hotkey to bring up our movement gizmo and move her over here and use the E hotkey to rotate it. So it'll tilt the tornado facing that direction now diagonally and then maybe frame uh, 300 or so. Let's bring it back to the middle. And have it facing upwards again using the W and E hot key for movement and rotation gizmo in case you're unaware. And at the very end, we'll have it uh, 
over here on this side and we'll just rotate it using the e hotkey this point right there okay so if we play back now we'll have a moving tilting tornado changing colors could be useful for some kind of sci-fi electrical storm like i mentioned uh, any kind of cool effect like that so what we can do now is we can customize or we can actually save this entire thing along with the data that we see here in the timeline so i'm going to go to the content tab and again in my set tab under custom under particle folder let's just go ahead and press the plus key there and we don't want to save over anything right now so let's go ahead and press no and we'll just call this uh, custom oops custom cool tornado I'm really lame at names, so don't worry about that. But uh, so let's go ahead and take our original tornado, our original tornado now, and just delete that. And we can bring in our custom cool tornado. And then if we play back, again, you're going to see the same uh, values here, it's this, all the same data in the attributes uh, uh, tracks there. And there we go, exactly the same as we saved it. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so that's that. Let's go ahead and just uh, delete this item right now since we don't need it in our scene anymore. Take off the tornado. And what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna do a custom particle mesh. So I don't need the timeline for this one. Let's just go ahead and make it visible. And I'm going to change the lighting a little bit. We're gonna bring our, our spotlight here so things are a little bit lighter. Lighten up the mood, so to speak. Let's press Shift S to simulate this one. And there you can see we're just shooting off tons of bitcoins or whatever they are all right if they were bitcoins we all be loaded but uh, yeah there you go so that's our uh, custom particle mesh right there and if we go to particle you'll see that uh we'll just press shift s first in the simulation and under uh the particle section right here i'm going to go to solid color mesh one and you'll see here there's where the uh, coin is all the base color and everything so this is a default mesh for this particular mesh emitter all right, so what we can do is we can actually replace the mesh with something else on our scene. So I've hidden in plain sight a popcorn kernel, which I'm going to just make visible right now. You can see a little popcorn kernel right there. And let's take our uh, particle mesh item and that same section over again, again, in the uh, popcorn effects tab under solid color mesh one. Let's just use our picker tool and pick that popcorn mesh. All right. So now if we shift S to simulate, now we're shooting off the uh, popcorn mesh, the uh, pieces of popcorn, just like this. All right, pretty simple. It's really as easy as that. Let's just shift S to end the simulation and we can save that just the same way. We can go to the content tab, again, set particle and just click somewhere where there's no item and press the plus key. And we'll call this a uh, cool popcorn stuff. All right, and scene manager, you can just uh, make this one invisible and just load in our cool popcorn mesh or po cool popcorn stuff, I guess I call it. All right, let's just load that in. And you can see it appear right there. Shift S to simulate. Shazam. There we go. We're shooting off. The father, the father kernel is watching all his baby kernels just shoot out of the mesh and murder there. Mesh emitter. Mesh murder. Anyways, let's press Shift S to end that simulation. Okay. Just kind of wanted to show you a quick example of how you can save the custom mesh emitter there as well. And so we can just go ahead and uh, make our popcorn mesh invisible. Now we can just delete our custom particle mesh since we already have it saved in our custom folder there. And let's take a look now at one final example, uh, emitter mesh, or emitter text rather. So I'm going to load this one up, make it visible, and let's turn down the lights again, set the mood, and we'll find this one a little bit higher up, I believe. There we go. And shift S to simulate that. Icon 7.2, you can see this cool retro design, hello. All right, very creative wording, it'll just kind of pop up again in just a moment here, Icon 7.2. All right, so if you go to the popcorn tab and uh, you'll find a emitter section here with the uh, text, text one, text two, you can see correspond to what we just saw on the screen. So we can just change this up by uh, typing in the text field there. Let's just type in iClone and uh, popcorn effects for text one. Text two is type in something like super awesome combo. Oops, not that symbol, exclamation mark. All right, there we go. So we've just kind of saved, uh, customized that rather. And uh, shift S to simulate. I put it popcorn effects. Dun, dun, dun. Super awesome combo. All right, and you can again just save that if you want to. I know I didn't do much customization, but uh, press the plus key. Press no to replace, to not replace rather. Super awesome combo, we'll call it. All right, 
And let's just delete the one we have on the screen right now and load in Super Awesome Combo. iClone and Popcorn Effects. Super Awesome Combo. All right, there we go. So that's the custom text emitter. I showed you the custom mesh emitter, uh, custom ribbon emitter. You can just save custom everything, basically. I just wanted to show you three examples here. And let's delete this super awesome combo one. We don't need that on the screen anymore. And now let's take a look at a really cool example. This is saving special settings using a sampled emitter shape. Okay, so I'm going to go to my scene manager here. And we're going to load up, rather make visible, three different types of emitters. We have fire blue, fire yellow, and smoke. Let's go ahead and shift S to simulate that. Wowzers, there you go, all right? So we have all the elements we need to make a really cool blazing something. I'll show you what it is in just a moment. Let's shift S to end that simulation, and let's make our wheel visible, all right? So we're gonna make a flaming wheel, which is really cool. So first we're gonna go to our fire yellow and go to our popcorn effects tab right here. And what you wanna do here is go to the under emitter to mesh sampler. Now we don't have any mesh, we just have the default mesh right now. All right, and uh, what you wanna do is you wanna to go to uh, the emitter setup. You wanna make sure that you have use mesh sampler selected. If you don't have this, it's not gonna work. All right, so let's go ahead and select the mesh and select our tire right there and shift S to simulate. There you have it, we have a uh, cool blazing tire, all right. So the procedure is exactly the same for the for the blue and the uh, smoke there as well. So just use our uh, select tool, select the tire, make sure that we use mesh sampler there. And now we have the blue and yellow fire all together, like a Ghost Rider type of tire. All right, and let's throw the smoke in there as well, just for good measure. Ba -da -ba -ba. There we go. Meter setup, use mesh sampler, and uh, we should have a smoking fiery tire now all right surreal all right let's make all those other ones invisible okay so say we want to uh, move the tire we want to transform it and uh, you know change the position and everything right now what we need to do first is we actually need to attach our emitters uh, our dummies rather to the actual prop itself so what you're going to do here is we're going to select the fire yellow item right here under the uh, attributes tab we're going to do is find the attach function uh, attach to pick parent and pick the wheel all right same thing with this one pick parent pick the wheel and this one pick parent pick the wheel so now if we actually change the position of the wheel now you can see that i already have an animation set up on the wheel if i press play now the problem is that it's shooting off flames in all directions which is not cool all right so uh it's kind of something that we don't want to happen so what we need to do is go into a little bit further into the fire yellow here and in the attach we need to go into this little uh ellipse section here and align position and rotation okay so we're gonna do that same thing with the fire blue align position rotation and fire smoke align position and rotation okay and let's just make those dummies invisible so they're not floating around the screen there and let's play back so you can see I have this kind of rotating tire animation right there and now we're going along with the uh fire right there pretty cool stuff all right we have the global illumination lighting up the scene and everything as well all right so if we wanted to customize that let's go ahead and again uh, or rather save it rather again the same process go to the content tab and plus oops we need not i will save it as a prop actually here uh, save it a custom prop and uh forgot to mention the prop folder there so let's call it a uh, crazy fiery wheel of death of death all right, so then if we go ahead and uh, you know bring in another wheel here, let's just uh, uh, let's just double click it actually, bring in another wheel, and you can see we have the second wheel. We can move our second wheel down here a little bit, and they're all, they're, they're going to end up in the same transform position, the same ending position. Okay, so if I play back, this one will move a little bit faster, and they'll just end up in the exact same position there because we have the uh, same ending transform position at uh, frame. I'm not sure what frame it was. Press F3, frame 200, okay, we have it uh, loaded up for frame 201, we have it uh, ending up in that same position there. All right, so pretty cool stuff. So let's take a look at one final example, which is saving sound for emitting par uh, particles, okay? So let's go ahead and close our timeline down, and I'm gonna load up this music ball item that we have, all right? We'll find that somewhere in our scene, there it is. And I have an avatar as well. Zines, you can see I have a lot of hidden stuff in this scene. 
let's turn on that spotlight so we can actually see stuff a little bit better. And if we uh, play back now, you'll see we have Zane. Oh, let's make our flaming tire visible there. That's kind of distracting. Let's just go ahead and delete the entire thing there. All right, and you can see, so we have this and we need to make sure that we have our music ball activated. Okay, so shift S. And you can see currently there's no sound attached to it. So if we play back, we'll have the sound of the swords, but the music ball won't be doing anything. So what I need to do with the music ball is go to the pop popcorn effects right here. And I need to select the popcorn effects sound sampler. All right, so what we can do here is we can actually just sample the sounds in our scene. So if we do that, that music ball will now sample the, the uh, sounds from our project. So if I go ahead and press uh, shift S there, you can see boom, boom, boom. All right. So we have the, uh, if you play back, it's creating those, you know, uh, emissions in coordination with the uh, sword sounds. So currently right now it, with the, in, in the emitter section, we only have the sphere. Now the cool thing about this is again, we can select a custom mesh. So what I'm going to do here is uh, select my custom mesh using the picker tool. And we're going to select that cool looking sword that Zane has, the executioner's sword. And then if we play back, you'll see that uh, the sword will emit and have, you know, emission particles in coordination with these sounds that I've set up in that project. All right, so really cool stuff. That's how you can kind of, uh, you know, attach the sound emissions to a particular mesh or a particular object in your scene. Now, if you want to save this, uh, you... At this time, you have to save it as a project. So you go to your content tab and under your project section here, custom, and save it as a custom sound project. Call it a custom sound project. All right, and then you can just start a new project and load up that old one here. And there you go, if we play back, it'll be the exact same thing. All right, so really cool stuff. That's how you can save the uh, you know, custom sound emissions to particular meshes on your object or particular meshes in your scene, and they can emit along with the in coordination with the sounds that are sampled from your scene. And one final example here as well, just as a little add on here, if you want to load any popcorn effects in your scene, all you need to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, make Zane invisible here. There you go. And we're going to go ahead and just load in a, a, a sample, a popcorn effect. So if you ever have a popcorn effect that you want to load into your iClone scene, the easiest way to do it. Just go to plugins, go to your popcorn effects plugin and Im import PKFX, which is a popcorn effects and has the uh, PKFX file name right here. So all you need to do is just go ahead and load that in. And there it is on our scene. Let's make this one invisible for now. Musical ball. We don't need it. So we loaded in this big explosion here. Okay. Now keep in mind that when you load in a PKFX file, that's a popcorn effects file. However, if you modify it in iClone and you save it in iClone, then it'll be known as an IPKFX file. So the, the uh, file name will be IPKFX as opposed to the PKFX. All right, so let's get back to the one we imported here. Shift S to simulate, boom, there we go. Explosion after explosion, and lingering flames. All right, pretty cool stuff. So that's how you can load in your own uh, popcorn effects if you have any, um, you know, a different library or something, just load them into iClone that way. All right, so that's really all there is to it, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully you learned a lot about, uh, you know, saving your own, saving and customizing your own popcorn effects. Uh, really useful stuff. And if you have any other questions, uh, we have a lot of experts on our forum at forum.reillusion.com, and you can always uh, check out our YouTube channel for more info on popcorn effects and other iPhone videos. So thanks so much for watching again, and I hope to see you in the next video.